Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin and today I want to finally cover the Combat Rogue Boomy comp that I've been playing with Tirga, give you guys as much of a detailed guide as I possibly can and hopefully give you guys some information that might help you improve if not get better at the comp and able to perform at your max potential whenever you play Rogue Boomy. Rogue Boomy is all about getting that insane opener burst onto your target. You can combo stuns back to back together with a solar beam as you ramp up onto your target. With a combat rogue you can basically take the sweet opener damage that basically will force cooldowns and ramp it onto your target to the point where they'll instantly die right afterwards. But if you play other specs such as subtlety or assassination the comp playstyle is going to vary slightly. But for the most part I found myself very comfortable playing combat rogue. But I will go over how the comp changes depending on the rogue spec. First things first to remember is this comp is considered a tier 2 comp. That means this comp does fall prey to most of the DPS healer comps as it should. One of the strongest comps that it most likely will lose against is Mage Paladin. Although it has been seen that it is possible to kite through the burst and then score a kill once the opportunity rises up. A comp like rogue Rogue Mage is a better alternative for this comp. Then you have Windwalker DK which is supposedly counters Boomy Rogue. But even with that information in mind you can still play this comp effectively and climb ladders and basically get your conquest cap while having probably the most fun that I've ever had playing a comp. So here is the breakdown of how this spec works based on your rogue spec. For the most time the boomkin is going to have to adjust those strategy slightly but not drastically. As a combat rogue you'll have insane sustain throughout the whole duration. Basically you want to establish a strong opener and if you are lucky you may be able to use that to ramp up into deep inside killing spree, scoring yourself a win while forcing trinkets and defensive coolies all over the place. If you're playing subtlety then this comp is going to be all about setups. Get as many setups as needed in order to force any missed trinkets and coolies and afterwards score a kill. The only problem with it is resetting that you are going to have to force and that is going to be difficult with the boomkin as they do have limited mobility, they do have decent heals, they do have bark skin but that's really the only defensive they have. They're not a mage that can completely ice block and get a full fresh reset. With assassination you'll basically want to force all coolies in the opener without having to use vendetta and only using vendetta after trinkets have been blown. So for the most part you might just have to bait trinkets but assassination is probably the worst spec of rogue to play this comp. You do have decent sustained damage but basically once your vendetta is out for the most part you don't have any more bursts left. So use your vendetta wisely. Again to reiterate this comp relies on a strong burst in the opener and for the most part my gameplay is going to be from a combat rogue perspective. So if you do play combat rogue this is probably going to be the most beneficial for you. If you do play assassination or subtlety basically utilize an assassination or subtlety opener that you can find all over YouTube but I will try to leave links in the description below of this video for some openers for subtlety and outlaw. If you want to type in the comments some of the other ones from other rogues that are are higher on the ladder and have had more experience I will add those links in the description as well for your guys information just to make sure that you get as much information in order to be as effective of a rogue as you can be. So now I'm going to share with you a couple of games of me and Tirga with different examples of how the games should run and I'll commentate over everything you see in the video. We have Enhancement Shaman Priest so in the beginning I'm going to sap the Shaman and open up on a Priest with a Shadow Reflection, Mark for Death, Kidney, Adrenal Rush and Anya's Trinket. While that is happening I'm going to build up for a full slice and dice and as the sap falls off of the Shaman I'm going to blind him. He's going to trade that blind for a Trinket which Tirga is then going to stun. So that is how we dealt with the shaman. As the kidney is fallen off of the priest I'm going to vanish, eviscerate and make sure to cheap shot right after the kidney falls off to keep the priest locked down stopping him from healing. The priest has used pain suppression but even if this damage reduction is on him it's still not going to stop the pressure that me and Tiger can put up. After the cheap shot the another kidney is coming out from shadow flexion so that's two internal bleedings onto the priest. I cloak offensively in order to make sure I don't get countered by a fear from the priest and Chirge is able to kick the heal from the priest as well. Basically we have two internal bleedings, auto attack damage, boomy damage for burst coming in and the shaman will succeed this whole time after you traded a trinket for a blind. In most cases you basically want to take out the DPS and burst the heal down as quickly as possible making this a 2v1 situation where it's an easy win. 
The next game is an example of how you should be killing Rusted Druids against one of the stronger comps, Mage Rusted Druid. If you have a Rusted Druid, you want to make sure to score a full open on him when he isn't in bear form. In most cases, you can go on them while they're in bear form, but there's so much more advantage when you can train them outside of bear. So I'm basically allowing Tyrgo to self heal and 1v1 one one the mage, forcing the druid to come out of stealth at one point or another. Once we catch him, that's where we go for the burst. As I'm going to try to line up as much damage as I can in the opener, Tyrgo is going to get into position. I'm going to again open up with a shadow reflection, mark for death, kidney onto the druid, and because he is out of bear, he's going to take a lot of pressure. He is going to get a bark skin up as soon as he can, but here goes my general rush, and I'm just going to start hammer damage to him. I cloak to get away from the ring in order to make sure that my opener is as effective as possible while Tyrga gets in position. The soul beam goes out early to lock out the druid and the extra kidney goes out from shadow flexion to catch him off guard. As you can see the druid is really low but because I'm playing a combat rogue I'm not going to reset I'm actually going to chase after the druid and keep pumping my damage as soon as possible. Now I want you to take a step back from what I've been talking about from me training the druid and take a look at the whole board. Look at the mage's health, look at the druid's health. What Tyrga is doing when he isn't able to touch the healer, he's hitting the DPS since he's got burst, so that's something you need to remember. Touch someone as long as it's someone, and always be touching somebody. Once you can line up damage once you're in a better position, sure, it's fine for you both to connect on the same target, but if you are separated this way, it is best, and especially when you get cooldowns, it is best for both of you to hit something, anything. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what, just be touching either the DPS or the healer. One of the things I would advise for as a combat rogue is to basically ride the train once you're on there. If the healer is dropping low and they're really feeling the pressure, keep riding them and keep riding the pressure. Pop as many coolies as you need to in order to force even more pressure. Because chances are as a combat rogue, with your mastery hits, your strong auto attack damage, your sense strikes that you're throwing out, multi strikes here and there, you are likely to score a kill simply from hitting him. Combat rogues deal serious damage, so just take that to advantage and ride the train for as long as you can. When versing against another double DPS such as a Mage Feral, you basically want to stop their damage using Nerf Strike, so you want to get a stun onto a target, if not multiple of them. Second thing, you want to kill one of the two targets as quickly as possible. Of the bat, I'm going to cheap shot the mage in order to make sure the nerf strike is available and then I'm going to get over to the feral and shadow reflection kidney him. I'm going to basically stop the damage from the mage by reducing it by 50% as Tyrga is sinking a few star surges into him, forcing him to block fairly early on and now we're going to swap our attention onto the druid because they got him in a full kidney. I'm going to Shadow Flexion Kidney the Druid, then Vanish of Viscerate Cheap Shot right as the kidney ends for a second kidney to line up for the Shadow Flexion afterwards, basically eliminating the Druid as soon as he trinketed, which I was able to park with a blind as he popped all of his coolies. In most cases, basically you want to peel for your Druid when it comes to against double DPS and score a kill as early as possible against another double DPS. The challenge of this comp is the many resets you are forced to do once you are facing someone like a Mage Paladin. A Mage Paladin comp is actually fairly difficult for a combat rogue boomy to crack, mainly because of the two ice blocks, a bubble, and the bobs. A bobs can be alternated onto the healer or onto the DPS as requested by the other team. So this one is fairly tough to play against. The idea behind it is to stay offensive while maintaining defense and scoring heals when you can and looking for that reset. The reason you stay offensive is because of a kick on a holy spell you can lock out the paladin and stop any bubbles from incoming. If you lock the mage out on frost with a kick, you can stop the ice block and have a way better chance of scoring a kill rather than burning through all the cooldowns. The two ice blocks, two bobs, and a bubble. The longer this team plays, the less chances you have of surviving this game. So while you're staying offensive, you also gotta play defensive. By this I mean you gotta keep up faint religiously, you gotta keep rejuvenate on whoever is taking the most damage, and if you can, you gotta basically position the enemy team to the point where they can't stop your boomkin from throwing you a legit heal, casting a full healing touch at you. The difficulty comes from playing defensive where you invest a little bit of energy for faint, watching out the enemy's spells, what spells are thrown out, watching out the enemy position, making sure the boomkin isn't getting CC'd, whereas a rogue you might be trained, and peeling for your boomkin once he is getting trained. It's a lot of things to watch for, but it is not impossible for a combat or boomkin to overcome a challenge such as a mage paladin. It just involves a lot of communication, a lot of playtime together, and coordination. 
As a player, Supertease told us, this comp is basically a variation of a TSG, where TSG's main uh, directive is to train the healer into the ground or whatever target they select. This comp basically does the same thing except for a caster of a boomy. The combination of a combat rogue sustained damage and pressure combined with boomkin burst and boomkin healing allows you to dish out fairly insane damage in the opener and even if the damage doesn't work out you still have plenty of ways of in terms of recovery past the burst if you don't score a win in the opener. This comp is a lot of fun to play. It is fairly challenging, but the fact that you can score a win in the opener will definitely help you get through the early MMR games, especially once you start playing this comp. It's... I mean, most people will end up basically... Let's say you're playing a Hunter Healer type of comp, they just won't know exactly when to trinket the burst, and once their health is way too low, you can drop a smoke bomb on a Hunter or a smoke bomb onto a Warlock and train. So, in the early game, uh, as you start climbing MMR, this comp is... Uh, should be fairly fun as long as you can execute your openers effectively. Most healers won't know what to do with it. Most DPS won't know what to do with this opener. Uh, as you got climb into the higher MMR though, most people will understand that, hey, you gotta shrink it early, you gotta pop your coolies early, you gotta stop their burst at the very beginning. And that's where you gotta incorporate coordination and CC, the back-to-back -back CC with your boomy in order to score yourselves a win uh, past that point. So hopefully you guys do enjoy the video and hopefully you guys do enjoy the tips and tricks about this comp. Hopefully you guys end up having fun playing this comp. My name is Dalaran and I'll see you guys in another video. I can't wait to go back and play some uh, combat rook booming with Tirga. So hopefully I get to do that today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.